everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Dali Vela podcast. I'm your host, Eugene Creepy MC. We continue to explore what's going on in the web free space by talking with web free professionals. And today is going to be the payments episode because crypto uh, started with the payment idea. Because if you have money, first thing function is to pay for somebody. And I'm having today Aaron Schneider, MBA, he's the business development and partnership at BitPay and BitPay is the largest and the oldest for those of uh, you who know the history of crypto cryptocurrency payments gateway it enables merchants to accept crypto payments with no volatility risk Aaron has been in the e-commerce fintech and payments industry for over 22 years and he's also the co-author of the better business book volume 2 which is also available on Amazon uh, have I uh, said all correctly, Aaron? And thanks for joining us today. Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, and uh, pleasure to be here. And excited to talk about crypto payments. Amazing! You are an experienced sales professional. You worked in the different branches. Uh, you worked for Brave. You worked. You you're working for. You worked for eBay for for Corporate America. So it's it's amazing to talk to you because you know almost all about all the sales not in web space but but in uh, all the sales where i me personally i love sales because this is the the talking to people this is to exploring their the needs and their requirements this is amazing part let's start with your story uh number three how did you get there and what have you already done yeah, so in terms of my background, um, I've really seen the payments industry evolve. Um, I kind of just lucked into the payment industry a little bit at the right out of college. Um, and I, I didn't know much about payments or Visa or MasterCard or American Express or or how things happen behind the scenes. But I, I ended up right out of college landing an entry level sales job uh, selling credit card processing services. So I, I would literally go door to door to businesses and sell them the old credit card terminals. Um, you know, I was even around when some merchants were using the manual, um, the manual credit card slips. Um, and so started uh, with that, uh, moved into regional sales, the national sales, worked for big organizations like JP Morgan Chase and Bank of America, you know, working on huge multi-billion dollar deals with companies like FedEx and Sports Authority and United Airlines and, you know, very big companies. Um, and then I kind of uh, just got really passionate about payments and, and wanted to learn about other segments of the payments world. Uh, so I was uh, probably employee number 30 at uh, a company called Bill Me Later, which was the first successful buy now, pay later company. Um, this is going back almost 20 years now. Um, and they ended up getting acquired by eBay and basically became what is now known as PayPal Credit. Um, and so I've also worked in uh, the buy now, pay later segment. I've worked in uh, the reward payments, uh, loyalty payments, mobile payments, and now crypto payments. Um, so really have seen um, the entire ecosystem of the payments industry evolve over the last 20 years. Well, uh, the question for experience is there, is it hard to be uh, business development and sales in web-free realm if compared to with uh, other business branches and niches and what excites you most of all in web free space dynamic velocity technology disruption what yeah I, i'd say innovation and disruption and and really just improvement right I, i'm a big believer in not just crypto but blockchain in general i just think there's so many different use cases where blockchain can have a benefit um you know just in terms of like simple ones right like so somebody goes and and buys a, a purse from Gucci. Um, but you know, everyone knows that authentication and counterfeits are like one of the biggest issues that these big brands are dealing with. So what if there was an NFT tied to that purse? Um, and you know, so if somebody wants to resell that purse, they need to resell the purse with the NFT so that you know it was authentic. Um, so there, you know, or like think about the real estate industry like how painful it is to do a closing on a house where you have a, a stack of a hundred different papers that you have to sign. Like what if it could all just be done on the blockchain in such a simple form? So there's just so many simplistic use cases where blockchain can innovate and improve current processes before you even get into crypto payments where, you know, the simplistic reason for crypto payments 
like for example, let's say here's a good real life example that I actually just helped implement. Uh, there's a Fortune 1000 company. Um, they have numerous developers in the Ukraine. Most of the banks in the Ukraine no longer exist. This company needed to pay their developers, so they're paying them via crypto. Um, so you know they the the fact that crypto is borderless and that we can operate in you know in 200 different countries um, and enable payments and you don't have you know every country le uh, levying you know huge FX fees and cross border fees to the transaction unnecessarily. Those are just kind of simplistic reasons for and things that excite me about the innovation and the transformation happening. And then with everything in Web3, like, you know, how are people going to shop in two or three or five years? You know, will they be shopping uh, in metaverse shopping malls instead of real shopping malls? So these are all kind of the things that excite me. Amazing. Uh, for those who've been staying in crypto for a while, uh, the payment function of crypto is obvious. Nothing uh, near this to explain how the payment works. But for vast majority of uh, players of the markets, this crypto, uh, crypto payment function is not so obvious. And by the way, they deal with fiat money. The balance sheets are uh, nominated in fiat money, and they don't want to know anything about this volatile crypto. So uh, I'm getting too close to the BitPay uh, main values. How, how BitPay works? How does it help to grow sales? How do you sell BitPay to your customers? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, the 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 basic value proposition of BitPay is that we remove all the crypto volatility risk. So, you know, the reasons that the Gucci's and the Balenciagas and the Hublots and the AMC theaters and the PacSuns and different NFT marketplaces are accepting crypto payments through BitPay is because you know, let's say they run a $100 transaction via Bitcoin, we're then sending them $99 US dollars or 99 euros or 99 pounds sterling. So the CFO at these companies doesn't have to lose sleep about the price of crypto going up or down overnight, uh, particularly the price going down. Um, so, uh, so that's one of the big selling points uh, is that the, uh, the merchant gets paid in fiat and we're essentially doing a real-time conversion of the crypto into fiat so that the merchant doesn't have to touch the crypto or hold the crypto or take any crypto risk. Um, there's other benefits to BitPay as well. Um, so for example, um, the fees are lower than credit cards. So most finance and treasury people are like, hey, today I'm paying two and a half or 3% for credit cards. BitPay is typically charging 1%. There's significant savings there. With crypto, merchants are also protected from chargebacks, um, unlike Visa MasterCard, where it's very easy for consumers to dispute transactions. With crypto, the merchant is more protected from chargebacks uh, because there is no, no such thing as a crypto chargeback. Um, and then finally, we've consistently found via third-party research from companies like Forrester and others that crypto customers will spend more than credit card customers, and crypto customers are usually highly incremental, valuable customers. So for example, we have case studies with Newegg and Atmex showing anywhere between 22 and 35% of the customers that pay with crypto are incremental new customers that those merchants had never seen before. Well, because uh, your sales are B2B sales, and uh, am I understanding you correctly that the, the main person who are, uh, makes the decision of or buy or not to buy is the CFO, not the sales director who is responsible for increasing of sales, but CFO. It is his pain of how to receive crypto or how to deal with crypto or how to not. Am I correct? I, I'd say they are definitely one of the main decision makers and one of the main influencers. Uh, we have also seen that the, the chief marketing officer, the VP of marketing also tends to be very, very interested in crypto as well. Um, because of the incrementality of crypto, because, you know, every CMO is looking for ways to appeal to the hundreds of millions of millennials and Gen Z customers and Gen X customers that are out there. And, you know, there's really no better tool than, uh, than something that people are, are passionate about. And we all know there's many, many people that are passionate about Bitcoin and Ethereum and Dogecoin and Litecoin and SHIB and ApeCoin and USDC Stablecoin and Eurocoin. So that, you know, there's armies of people that are passionate about these things. And so this is a way to bring those people into your store, onto your website and appeal to a whole new audience. 
Well, do your customers uh, care what exact cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, is used, is being used in the direct transaction where they receive pay via BitPay, or it doesn't matter for them? It doesn't matter. Yeah, the beauty of BitPay is that we enable them to accept 13 different cryptocurrencies. Um, they only pay the 1%, regardless if it's a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Litecoin transaction, um, and they get paid in fiat, so they don't have to take any crypto risk. So we can pay them in US dollars, euros, pound sterling, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, Mexican pesos, et cetera. As I do understand, the reverse operation or paying, paying via BitPay by, uh, by fiat when I pay fiat and then transfers into crypto to my, uh, to my partner, is it, is it possible with BitPay too? Yes, that is a separate offering of BitPay. We have a crypto payout offering. So, um, so that example I gave earlier of, you know, you have a, a company who needs to pay out contractors, affiliates, vendors, employees in other countries. We all know that there's a lot of volatility in fiat currencies in certain countries around the world. You know, think the Ukraine, think Sri Lanka, um, you know, think uh, Venezuela, Argentina, all these countries that have very, very volatile fiat currencies. Many companies are now saying, hey, uh, I'd rather pay out my vendors, contractors, employees, um, affiliate partners, or even pay out crypto rewards than continue to send fiat, which can be very expensive with FX fees and cross-border fees. So we do have a service that enables a company to send us fiat so they could send us US dollars or pound sterling or euros, for example. They never have to touch the crypto. Then they send us the first name, the last name, the email address, um, and uh, the amount that of money that they want to send to the customer. And then we handle the crypto payout for them. And we can pay out to any any uh, verified crypto wallet address. Okay. Uh, why did you choose BitPay among all other good crypto payments processes? Uh, why are your competitors and uh, why, why did you choose BitPay? Um, well, I mean, the, the number one reason why uh, we're seeing merchants uh, choose BitPay is that we can connect them to a bigger crypto audience than anyone else. So we're compatible with over 100 crypto wallets. So instead of the merchant having to go do individual integrations into MetaMask or individual integrations into Coinbase or individual integrations into blockchain.com, we give them all that in one-stop shopping. So with, with BitPay, you're instantly connected to over a hundred different crypto wallet addresses, uh, crypt crypto wallets and crypto exchanges. So you know we can uh, enable Coinbase customers, MetaMask, blockchain.com, Kraken, Gemini, Cash App, all these customers are compatible with BitPay. Absolutely. How do you see the uh, adoption, the mass adoption of crypto payments and businesses in upcoming five or 10 years? Are you bullish? Yeah, yeah very, very bullish. I mean, listen, our, our, our CEO and founder um, started BitPay 11 years ago. So we were definitely one of the earliest payment pioneers. And um, you know, in the early days, we were doing very, very few transactions and that those transaction volumes have continued to grow and grow and grow. And now we're, you know, typically doing over a billion dollars a year in crypto payments. And we think the sky's the limit for how big this can get. You know, really, a lot of our growth will depend on the future growth of crypto in general and, and just more and more and more adoption. But if you look at the growth curve of crypto and you compare it, for example, to the growth curve um, and adoption of the internet, the two growth curves are actually quite similar. So, you know, uh, fingers crossed that crypto continues to see that growth curve. And if that happens, then, you know, hopefully in the next five or 10 years, we're doing, you know, 10 billion or 20 billion a year in payments volume. Uh, are there any geographical limitations of uh, where the potential clients would pay may be, might be based or all around the globe? Uh, only uh, only geographical limitation would be OFAC sanctioned countries. So, you know, we're we're operating around the globe um, minus OFAC sanctioned countries. Yes. Uh, what is the best deal of uh, you have closed uh, in your life with BitPay that you are very proud of? May we say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, we just recently launched a deal that I'm super excited about. Um, there was actually a uh, panel discussion on payments.com uh, with this particular merchant and our CEO. Uh, the merchant is called Panini America. 
Uh, they've been around for, I think, 75 or 80 years. Um, they uh, are one of the largest companies in the trading card and collectible industry. Um, they have licenses with the National Football League, uh, the NBA, the World Cup, um, and they've started their NFT marketplace and they've grown it to become, I believe, the 10th or 11th largest NFT marketplace in the world. Um, and uh, they chose us not just for crypto payment acceptance, but also for crypto payouts. And so, you know, they really built their NFT marketplace and their whole ecosystem, um, you know, partially around BitPay capabilities, which is super exciting uh, to see that people are wanting to uh, pay for NFTs. And, and we're not talking about just five and ten dollar NFTs. I mean, they have some very rare, exclusive basketball and football NFTs that sell for twenty thousand um, dollars. And so they're selling these NFTs uh, and enabling customers to pay with crypto. And then uh, let's say somebody buys one and then wants to resell it. That customer that buys one and resells it is also able to um, cash out and, and get a payout in crypto as well. So it's a very exciting NFT marketplace. We're, we're super excited to partner and collaborate with them. Uh, one more thing. Uh... BitPay is supported by more than 90 crypto wallets, and I am personally also the ambassador of the one crypto wallet named Trusty Wallets on my t-shirt. And I am wondering technically, why uh, does BitPay need to be uh, implemented into wallet? Because for payment, I need only to scan uh, the address from my wallet, and I do not need to be implemented in my wallet any payment services. Why do you need such an integration? Yeah, so there's something called the JSON payment protocol, and BitPay has been a leader um, in helping to push the JSON payment protocol forward. And so the main reason why we need kind of an extra level of integration, a deeper integration, if you will, is because of underpayments and overpayments. Historically, one of the small downsides of crypto payments has been uh, underpayments and overpayments. And so by having direct integrations with these wallets and developing a deeper integration, we're able to automate certain processes around underpayments and overpayments that couldn't be automated otherwise. And so that's one of the advantages of working with BitPay is that as a merchant, your operations team is not going to spend hours and hours and hours dealing with underpayment or overpayment issues we take that on, that becomes our responsibility, and we're able to automate most of that for a merchant. Got you. Uh, are you personally satisfied to stay in web free space? How do you see your personal evolution and development as a BCF? And would you recommend people from web two or classical businesses, not even related to the internet, to look into the web free site and to try themselves in the web free realm? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very bullish on Web3 in general. I do have some concerns about Web3. Uh, you know, probably one of my concerns about Web3 is interoperability between Web3 platforms. I'm, I'm still not clear on, um, on how there's going to be interoperability between all these different metaverse platforms that are working. Um, and I understand at some point there might be some consolidation. Um, but, uh, but so that's a big question mark for me is the interoperability question. The other question um, is around like universal standards and protocols, um, you know, and so it's, I think it's important that, um, that there be universal standards and protocols in Web3 so that all the, all the systems can work more seamlessly to develop um, a more streamlined, uh, less friction filled experience for consumers. Um, so those are just things that I think about. But yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about Web3. You know, BitPay, I think, is actually a good classic example of a company that, you know, has been around for 11 years, um, has been doing really well in Web2, and is now transitioning um, our capabilities and working with more and more Web3 merchants. And so, um, yeah, I, in terms of being involved in Web3 and, and my advice for people that might be in the Web2 world, um, I would say just, you know, really start becoming a student of the metaverse, become a student of Web3, become a student of crypto and blockchain. Um, and, you know, I, I don't actually think people should jump at the first job opportunity offered to them in Web3 because, you know, oftentimes these companies haven't really totally figured out their business model. And I personally am not a big believer in working for companies that haven't really figured out how they're going to make money. 
Um, and so, you know, my advice would be wait for, you know, be a student of it now and wait for the opportunity with the right company where they have figured out what the business model is. It is absolutely obvious that you are a man of a strong family values. Uh, the family uh, photo is behind your, uh, on, on your back. Uh, what about your children? Do you use crypto? Do they use crypto? Do they learn crypto? How do they, how would suggest, would you suggest parents to connect their children with crypto for, for, uh, for learning? <laughs> yeah, that? yeah, there, you know, there's little things like, you know, I have a friend who, um, he actually has a, you know, he's mining Ethereum and he involves his children. Um, you know, I'm constantly talking to my kids about different Web3 and NFT opportunities that I'm working with uh, just to kind of get them familiar, get them situated with it. I don't, I don't think it's something that should be pushed, um, you know, extra hard, but I don't think it's something that should be avoided either. I think the easy explanation is that, you know, blockchain and crypto you know, this is kind of the future of money. So having some basic understanding of these things is important, whether you're five years old or whether you're 65 years old. What are main thoughts on NFT? And by the way, recently you told on the podcast with uh, the uh, husbands of your sister, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, sorry. You are the cousin of- Oh, brave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lamborghini so I, 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 NFT I, collection. Yeah, we did a we did a podcast talking about the Lamborghini NFT collection. Um, yeah, so um, you know, I think uh, I think NFTs um, are super interesting. You know, I think there's lots of different use cases for them. I think I mentioned one earlier, like in the example of you know, let's say you're a luxury brand and you're selling a luxury product, and uh, an NFT would accompany it. Um, I think NFTs really eventually will come down to utility and whether cu customers see utility. I, I think um, the days of NFTs purely being um, just a digital picture will eventually fade away and there will have to be some utility tied to them in the future and, and also rarity, right? Like, um, you know, I think uh, the companies that have seen the biz biggest success tend to make NFTs that are more on the rare side. So when you go and issue 20,000 NFTs and mint 20,000 NFTs, the rarity goes away a bit. But if you're only issuing one NFT or five NFTs or 10 NFTs or some very rare collection, um, I think that also changes things. Um, so those are just some high level thoughts on NFTs. Well, can you give us three solid recommendations how to become a good sales, sales or biz dev in web free space? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to networking. Um, you know, one, one of my secret sauces um, that I always try to follow is, um, is really around understanding the ecosystem and understanding who are the other, uh, who are the other companies that are selling to the same companies that I'm selling to and how can I network with them and how can I create referral partnerships with them, for example, where they're looking for opportunities for me and I'm looking for opportunities for them. So that's definitely, I think, key, um, you know, being a student, uh, not, not being a know-it-all, not claiming to know it all. There's something new I'm learning every single day. Um, I think consistently building the network too. I mean, every day uh, for the last 12 years, I've made a practice of reaching out to new contacts, even if I've never spoken to them, just to say, hey, we operate in the same industry or we're interested in some of the same things, or we have a hundred mutual connections. Um, and so those are probably three things that I've done that have definitely helped me. And do not forget about LinkedIn, although it is centralized social media, it works well in that free space. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I have uh, about 19,000 LinkedIn connections. So LinkedIn has definitely always been one of my main sources of networking. I, I would welcome your audience members to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Aaron Schneider, A-A-R-O-N-S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. Uh, from BitPay, you can send me a, a LinkedIn connection request. I'm happily accept. Just mention uh, that you heard me on Eugene's podcast. Amazing. So the link on uh, our link, LinkedIn is in the description, of course. Uh, Aaron Schneider, MBA and BitPay, the staff and uh, partnership. If you are looking into the side of crypto payments, this is the best 
uh, maybe the best entry point to connect with him on LinkedIn and to ask how it works and why not to try. Thank you very much, Aaron, Aaron Schneider, MBA, and Eugene Kripke, MC, where we did. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been an episode of the Down Vela podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for next episodes of the Down Vela podcast. We deliver you amazing, unique interviews with the free professionals who built the space with their minds and, and hands. Bye-bye. Blockchain. B-L-O-C-K chain. Digital money, smart contracts, NFT, IDO, decentralization, transparency. So many opportunities, but so many challenges. Some financial manipulators by their actions confuse blockchain solutions and block their development. The idea that the blockchain should bring copyright and royalties protection to the next level is quite old. But the realizations of this idea are not perfect at all. There is another problem of determining the value of a particular cryptocurrency or NFT. These and other problems need to be solved. Fortunately, the blockchain infrastructure is evolving. My name is E, Mr. E, and I represent the Invalo project. Many things have already been invented in the blockchain today. Tokens, smart contracts, platforms for creating your own coins, NFTs, exchanges for buying, selling, and exchanging all these blockchain resources. Envelope is another step in the development of crypto technologies. The protocol that works with NFT and cryptocurrencies. The idea is simple but disruptive. Let's assume you have an NFT, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Using the Envelope protocol, you can wrap the original NFT accompanied with several tokens. Technically, you get a similar NFT, but what is the break for you? Once wrapped, the token has a number of additional features that were not available before. The minimal cost appears. It is provided with coins wrapped together with NFT. An asset wrapped with envelope has a number of properties that allow the original author to receive royalties from the resale of that asset. Various rules can be applied to the wrapped token. For example, a lock period for unwrapping. It secures the asset till the determined moment or safeguards it from speculation during the high period. At the same time, wrap tokens can be transferred and traded. These are just some of the scenarios for using Envelop. NFTs become more popular and the tools provided by Envelop expand the opportunities of NFTs utilization. Wide application possibilities are achieved due to the fact that, in addition to the protocol, the project includes a number of subsystems. The protocol provides functions wrapping and unwrapping. Oracle Mechanics provides asset valuation using analytical algorithms. Index provides a summary assessment of several NFT assets with the common criteria. The project has its own token, which connects all elements of the system. Altogether, this is invalid a tool in the blockchain world for building modern and secure systems in various fields. Find more info about the project on the website. Invalid. Make your NFT valuable. Just practical. No hype.